It feels like every day at the moment there is something new being talked about for Battlefield 1. We've got DLC maps being tested, new weapons to play with on the CTE, front lines being added to even more base game maps, and talk of operations changes coming in the November patch. But today I wanted to highlight some less notable changes that have had smaller mentions in passing, but I think they're still extremely important, and they're likely to have a big impact on how the game plays out. And so firstly, let's talk about Battlefield 1's lighting issues. They can be pretty bad depending on the map and the location, but at launch we didn't appear to have that much of an issue, and then the March update rolled out with the French DLC, and I think we've now all experienced the issue of looking outside a building from inside, and it just being insanely bright. And I think it's to do with the lighting of what you would experience in real life, where sometimes if you're in a darker environment and you look outside, it takes a couple of seconds for your eyes to adjust. Well, in Battlefield 1, it's kind of like that effect, but extremely overboard. And the other way around as well, looking from outside a building inside, it makes everything look extremely dark, and sometimes you can't pick out players that might be hiding in there. DICE has tried a couple of times, I think, to fix this in a couple of patches that have come out since the March update, and they haven't really made that much headway at the moment because there are still plenty of occasions where looking outside of buildings will cause massive bloom effects and it will go all white, or if you're looking inside buildings you just cannot see what's going on unless you've literally got your nose pressed against the glass. However, in Battlefield 1's Incursions client, that's the competitive experience that's currently in closed alpha, the developers over there have made some big changes to the lighting recently in order to eliminate some of these issues, and it's so that they can bring a balanced, fair lighting system to the game that will sit well in a competitive environment. Now, they specifically worked on the lighting when looking in and out of buildings. They've worked on the lighting inside buildings itself, so the different scenario of you having normal light inside a building, and darker areas of maps where players might be able to hide. I've got some screenshots rolling on the screen right now, and you'll notice overall that the map looks a lot brighter, and the contrast between light and dark areas has been drastically reduced. I think this kind of lighting change could work really well in vanilla Battlefield 1, but it might require some work. Now, I'm unsure if these kind of lighting changes could be blanket applied to all of the maps in the game, or if the developers would need to work on a map-by-map -map basis to improve the lighting, but I'm betting, because it's the Frostbite engine, it's the latter of those two options. One thing is for sure, however, DICE can fix these lighting issues that have been causing problems since the first DLC. It's just a matter of how much work it will take to apply that to every single map that we currently have. Now, if it's too much work at this point in Battlefield 1's life cycle, it might not happen. Battlefield 1 is at the tail end of its development now, and we're closing in on the final DLC in early 2018, so it's safe to assume the workforce that once was making content for this game has either moved on to Star Wars Battlefront 2 or Battlefield 2018. Whether those developers can be sacrificed or reclaimed for Battlefield 1 just for some lighting issues, I'm not 100% that that would get greenlit. If this is an easy change overall though, I think it's a no-brainer, and DICE may as well take the improvements that have been made in the Incursions client, and try and see if they work in the Battlefield 1 vanilla version, and all of the other maps that are now in the game. I know there are plenty of players out there that would appreciate this kind of change. Next up, let's talk about vehicle customization. This is something that currently is only possible in a live server environment. You cannot customise a vehicle in the main menu, as you can with your soldier. And it's only possible to enter the customised screen for vehicles if a vehicle is ready to be spawned into. And that's rather inconvenient, and a little bit difficult to really choose what loadout you want in the short amount of time that you've got that vehicle reserved before someone else can steal it. DICE has expressed that vehicle customization is something they're committed to bringing to the game, but that was all the way back at the launch of the game, nearly 12 months ago now. It seems finally, however, that work for this feature will be starting soon. DICE developer Sonic Frequency mentioned on Reddit a couple of weeks back the following. 
When we add the vehicle customization screen that can be accessed anytime, even if there isn't a vehicle available to spawn, you will be able to modify all the vehicle specific soldier kits as well. Work on this is starting within the next week, if all goes well. Now, if we take Sonic Frequency at his word, then potentially, work for this is already going ahead. Considering Turning Tides will be bringing two new vehicles to the game, it seems like a good time to add this feature for players to have more control over their vehicle options. But really, and we're not kidding here, and I'm not kidding either, this is something that should have been in development much, much earlier on. My understanding is that there were some issues around getting it working at the time of launch, and it was going to be delayed until the first patch. And then they just couldn't figure out how to make it work, so essentially, it got shelved for a later date. I'm glad it's coming around now, but that doesn't excuse the fact that it's been nearly a year since the launch of this game, and a very basic feature, like customization of a vehicle, that we've come to expect from Battlefield games, wasn't in the game and still isn't in the game now, really isn't excusable. I'm not a huge vehicle player myself, but I know many players that are, and their place in Battlefield games is paramount to the experience. Vehicles are what makes Battlefield Battlefield on certain maps. They deserve their own customization menu, the same as the soldiers. So if this is in development now, DICE, great, get it in the game as soon as you can, but really, it should have been in the game a long time ago. The third fix that's currently brewing for Battlefield 1 is the sliding feature, or the crouch slide as a lot of people call it. This is new to the franchise, and many players have their own opinions on it. Whether they're good or bad, it will depend on who you really talk to. Now currently, in the vanilla game, it can be abused quite severely. You can use it in quick succession, you can slide out of trouble really easy, and you can use it to dodge bullets when enemies have caught you out in the open. DICE has said for a while that they wanted to change the slide from something that's currently abused as an extension of the movement system into more of a safety feature and allow a player to slide into cover and escape danger, but then not re-engage it straight away to try and outmaneuver their opponent. The sliding fix went live on the CTE alongside the Turning Tides maps, and I have to say that DICE has definitely achieved their goal of removing the abuse of the slide. You're still able to slide, and it is very effective, but you're hit with a cooldown once you activate it, and it means that you can't activate it again in the same way that you could before. So now if you want to use it quickly, one slide after another, you're going to lose momentum and eventually you'll end up just crouching up and down on the spot. It feels very similar to the fix that DICE applied to the bunny hopping in Battlefield 4, and that was an issue that was rife in Battlefield 3, so DICE did the right thing in fixing it. Essentially, in Battlefield 4, if you tried to jump lots of times whilst you were sprinting in quick succession, you'd be penalised with a reduction in movement speed, and eventually, you'd end up jumping up and down on the spot, stationary, not running anywhere. This is a big improvement overall, and I think DICE has maybe extended the length of which your soldier can slide across the ground as a compensating feature, although that might be a placebo effect because now that I've got used to the new system, I'm letting the slide extend as far as it can so that I can get behind cover because I know I can't activate it again. Hopefully, this will help players understand the new system a bit better and they'll start using that slide a bit more tactically. And lastly, I wanted to briefly touch on the ADAD spam fixes. DICE applied their updated system to the CTE last night for the Turning Tides test, and I think that was their second iteration of the fix. They're still trying to find the right values. And many players, they responded negatively. Said it felt too sluggish, like you were running through a bog, and that they've gone too far the other way, in true DICE fashion. DICE has now stated, however, new values have been created based on last night's test, and another update will be coming to the CTE very soon. Now, in short, the new system will apply a bonus to your movement if you've stood stationary for a short amount of time. This bonus has been added to give you a boost so you can get moving faster, but if you're already on the move and you try and stray from side to side, you won't get that bonus, so it will be slightly slower. The new movement is somewhere in between what is currently live in Vanilla Battlefield 1, essentially the movement system that's been there since the launch of the game, and what was active last night on the Turning Tides test. So hopefully we get another chance to test the movement system again soon. 
So overall, that's four small updates that will go a long way to making Battlefield 1 feel very different if they all get applied. DICE is making some small but significant changes, and I'm confident that the sliding and movement systems will be making their way into the main game very soon. Those feel very close to being finished. As for the lighting and the vehicle customization, I'll keep my ear to the ground for any info, and as always, I will get you an update if and when we get one. But thank you very much for watching today. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and I'll be down there reading as many as I can. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.